Uh, okay, so uh, <laughs> uh, so this is uh, a presentation of the BrightRap project. So basically, uh, BrightRap is an open source uh, Braille embosser. Uh, that is a device uh, to make some dots uh, on paper or some uh, other material. Uh, you can use uh, plastic or uh, even uh, tin, uh, uh, tin metal uh, <laughs> to emboss uh, dots. Uh, I assume everyone uh, know about the Bray. Uh, the Bray is the, um, um, basically an alphabet uh, made with uh, with dots on paper uh, to enable uh, inside people to read uh, with uh, their finger uh, as we read with uh, with our eyes. And uh, Braille App is an open open source uh, project. Uh, and the sound uh, license uh, with uh, basically everything you need to, to build uh, a device on GitHub. Uh, we will see it uh, a little further. Uh, one thing is interesting about uh, the device, uh, it is uh, that is based on the, on the 3D printer uh, electronics. So uh, we can make standard braid, but uh, we can also emboss contour uh, just to make plants or uh, <laughs> emboss some shape or some some maps. And uh, we will see that the, the most uh, interesting things is about the software around the machine. <laughs> uh maybe uh we will have a look uh at uh, the history of the the project uh, hello. because it's a long story but ah, i have a mic uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, in Fab Library, uh, there was uh, many, many tentative uh, about uh, making some braid device. Uh, we meet some of them at the start of the project, uh, the Mayuman Kit organization, uh, because they were uh, organized some uh, hackathon uh, about the subject, uh, about making some open source device uh, for uh, insider people. And uh, they test uh, some device that derived from a 3D printer. <laughs> Uh, with um, uh, some well modified, uh, um, where do you call that? Uh, the head of the printer uh, with a screw uh, to make some dots on paper. Uh, that was a proof of concept, but uh, uh, <laughs> we think that, that there is something that can be uh, uh, better. Uh, there is some project, uh, <laughs> um, notably uh, a teenager uh, who made Bray um, Rambosa with uh, Lego bricks uh, <laughs> in early. Uh, we have also a project called Open Bray uh, from a guy which is called Carlos Campos, uh, who made the uh, Braille on uh, but derived from a recycled uh, standard printer. Um, all these projects uh, were very interesting, but there was nothing very easy that uh, you can use in the workshop uh, to start to build a device and <laughs> having it uh, finished uh, with. Uh, mm, not very accurate uh, technical people, you know. Uh, 
so we start uh, a project and it was called Brara PSP. <laughs> uh just uh from scratch uh designing uh, a device <laughs> that can uh move uh brace over a page of paper and uh, uh some tested uh, some trial software uh to start uh on both brave uh everybody was uh, very enthusiastic about, about the result. So uh, we made some version and uh, the COVID <laughs> and some experiment made the project nearly die. Uh, in 2022, uh, we had the opportunity to start the project uh, with some people. So we start to uh, <laughs> make some uh, uh some evaluation and uh, we had the, the opportunity to uh, organize uh with uh, the ANIAC and daniel kenny and uh, the cc lab uh hugo Bain, uh the bright rap camera operation so uh where well, we made a workshop in the public school and uh <laughs> Uh, master class uh, in two club labs. Uh, <laughs> now, what's the project? Uh, basically, it's uh, <laughs> basically it's a uh, device where we can uh, <laughs> uh, use a sheet of papers and uh, we will move a stylus over the paper to uh, make some dots on the on the right uh, on the right uh, location so you will need uh some stuff uh, <laughs> uh basically a plywood for the chassis uh, some uh, mechanical parts uh linear guide uh some poulet uh <laughs> this is some very classic stuff uh for a 3d printer so you can find uh, all of this very easily uh <laughs> and we made a build manual with all the steps uh well we we will start uh uh where will you start uh to glue the chassis and step by step uh introduce each part uh uh all the um, the parts of the mesh uh, of the machine uh can be made with a 3d printer so we have uh some didactic uh <laughs> Uh, solution uh, to make some work uh, some workshop in public area uh, <clears throat> so basically we have a machine where you can do this kind of stuff just a little video hola So you can see the device working <laughs> uh, with a sheet of paper moving in the machine and uh, uh, the stylus uh, moving on the other axis, building some dots uh, on the machine. And uh, everything uh, can be fine uh on the website uh we have some link over the documentation uh all <laughs> the file you need uh to, to build the chassis all the file you need to uh print uh every part and a github repo uh 
where you have the device and <laughs> the software uh, with some experiment. Uh, this is a new stuff uh, to emboss, uh, to translate music score in Braille. This is very experimental, but very fun. And uh, uh, the next software is uh, Access Braille Wrap. Uh, this is the last one. Uh, we made some. <laughs> uh, but these days, uh, we have a software where we can just write some text. Hmm. And you have it translate in braille uh, immediately. <laughs> uh, this is the first thing. Uh, you can also take uh, open office document and import it in the software. Uh, select the, the page you want to emboss and directly use the print button <laughs> to emboss all the all the uh, where it's in Interesting. It's uh, because we use a library to uh, translate uh, text in Braille. Uh, this library uh, is a very old project on GitHub. So we have 200 combination of Braille translation for nearly every language. Uh, <laughs> So you can see uh, we have uh, Africans, uh, we can translate uh, Arabic. Uh, at the end, we will find uh, uh, Zulu, Vietnamese, and everything. So at this time, we have a uh, um, <laughs> software in French and English. Uh, but can, we can imagine to uh, translate brain in many languages. Uh, do you have any question? I see that Hugo is here and it's showing off the Braille wrap. <laughs> uh, sorry, I did not understand. So, <laughs> um, I said a Hugo is here. Um, I'm sorry, Hugo, if I'm saying your name. Yeah, correctly. I am one, but I just <laughs> need to move. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very happy to be there. Thank you, Brianna. Yeah, of course. Is there anything else that you wanted to present or did you want to move into the discussion? I think uh, Jürg, Jürg, uh, uh will be happy to uh, say some words. Okay. That's... Okay, okay, I'm very I'm happy to see Daniel, Daniel here, here. My, my great friend, friend uh, Daniel. Daniel. And um, 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 if, if, if you agree, agree as, as we have previously, previously uh, planned, um, I, I, would I would like, like to hear Daniel, Daniel to speak about the special operation my association set up with him and Stefan on the field in Cameroon, uh, because it's the reality of the field in Africa. And, and uh, uh, if, if you agree, agree Daniel, Daniel, I would, I would like, like you to be a witness, witness for perhaps 10 minutes of the Braille Rock Cameroon origins and what, what we, we met together. together. Thank you to give me uh, the floor. And uh, I would just uh, rapidly say that uh, I meet uh, um, Charlie Giano in Belgium in the November 2021. Uh, and then uh, as after present uh, the experiences of a uh, blind uh, user computer in Cameroon, uh, he, uh, Charlie Jano was uh, uh, um, very happy to know it. And then when uh, Hugo Oben take the floor to, to, to say something, about it, I take rapidly the visit card of uh, Charlie Giano and come back 
in Cameroon after the summit organized by um, International Organization for Mayors. And then in the January 2022, I sent a message to Ilge Obend in the platform where we are together and say, we need, we need to be, uh, to access to culture, but lack of material is not uh, allow us to access to culture and to information in the accessible format. And uh, Ilga Oben rapidly uh, uh, call uh, and begin to think with uh, Stefan and share with us the idea, the possibility to implement in Cameroon uh, something, uh, an operation to sensitize and to produce document into Braille. And then uh, from uh, January 2022 to June 2022, we put on place a project called Braille Rap Cameroon. And uh, Hugo Oben and Stefan uh, Godin tried to have uh, financial needs uh, um, and supporting by uh, my human kid and uh, uh, Orange, International Orange Company, and they come in Cameroon. From uh, July to August 2022, we make a history each operation prior up Cameroon inside uh, four towns, Bafusam, Douala, Yaoundé, and Betwa. And the operation were mediatized, it means that they, uh, they, they make a reporting through TV, through radio, and the community of uh, beneficiaries of ANIAC blind visual impaired in Cameroon were very satisfied because the operation allow citizens to know that inclusion in the um, ICT is possible, is touchable, is uh, visible because we become, uh, as I can say, uh, consider um, uh, from the stake uh, uh, maker, decision maker. And we were very happy. And we produced in Cameroon eight, eight dry wrap. And we give back those dry wrap to some of uh, schools where blind people, students are going and, and, and are listening to their training. And we were hoping, we were thinking that in uh, 2000, uh, 2023, this year, we will have the same operation to, to supply lack of access to culture to, to visual impaired and uh, lack of need, lack, lack, lack of need uh, doesn't uh, till now let us uh, um, implement uh, a project. And uh, I know that Igor Oben and Stefan Godet were still thinking how to do to come back in Cameroon to continue that uh, marvelous adventure. And uh, I know that uh, Stefan Godin worked very hard again to make uh, their apps uh, software accessible to visual impaired because he told me that working in how to use uh, their app with NVD, it will be very possible. So I'm waiting I'm waiting proudly that uh, the second step, step, stage of the, that operation and uh, the inno including all the innovation uh, found by uh, Stefan Godin be uh, possible to be operated in Cameroon. That's what I can say in a few words, uh, Mr. Hugo Oven, uh, concerning our marvelous uh, adventure of last year. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. So I introduce myself. My name is Hugo Bain. I am a self, self I, I, myself, I discovered my hands in 2010. 
uh, and I discovered my hands through Arduino cards and some maker stuff. And um, in 2020, uh, 2013, uh, I was a founder of an international networks of uh, uh, places where uh, people with disabilities are choosing the projects, are uh, making the projects with volunteers, uh, sponsors, and so on. Uh, and everything go in the common good of humanity. Not when it's finished. At the beginning, um, when the projects are, are progressing and after. And um, as we had uh, some blind people coming in the, our local place, which was called the Human Lab, and on the Andy Lab, it means a place for all the humans with or without disabilities. Um, and as I uh, myself was very involved in the RepRap uh, movement, uh, which is a historical movement of open source uh, 3D printers, I was very interested in the, post, the potential of G-code uh, language. And as the Braille printers are moving uh, on <laughs> four axes, uh, three axes, uh, I, I thought to myself, let's set up a project where we could meet anybody able to transform any 3D printer in a Braille machine. So the idea is that the, you, 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 you print a piece, a piece of plastic. This piece of plastic, you put a nail into this piece of plastic. You put this piece of plastic on uh, the head of your 3D printer. You put paper on the plate of your 3D printer. And then you use an external software that computes uh, the translation between text into G-code movements. And we push the documentation online. And in 2013, we had a very poor prototype that was able to emboss Braille uh, using classical 3D printers. In 2016, we set up a big uh, workshop in India, in Mumbai, with Makers Asylum and Akade as a partner, I remember. It was the Fabricarium Mumbai. And for the first time, I had a tester who was a blind advocate, Indian. And I discovered that when I, uh, I put the end of this person in the machine, uh, without plugging the machine on the, on the electric power for security, this person was totally able to have a mental image <laughs> of the machine in his head and to provide information on how to improve uh, the project. It was something very interesting to me to imagine what was in the mind of a blind people that can figure a 3D machine with all the mechanical pieces. And then we made a second version uh, that make us able to transform not only 3D printers, but uh, milling machines. When I went back uh, at the a place uh, here in Rennes, in France. Uh, there was Stéphane Godin, and there was Philippe Pacot, a second man, who had told, who had told me, oh, your solutions, they, they will never be good like a machine um, really dedicated to Braille language. And I, I had told to them, OK, it's easy to say, but saying is one thing, making is another. And when I went back, there was a kind of box on the table. And in less than three weeks, they had invented the first version of the actual Braille Wrap machine. The Braille Wrap world uh, was invite, invented by myself by the idea of forking the Wrap Wrap machines. Uh, yeah. It was the beginning of a great adventure. And uh, as my association is dedicated to fast climate change effects through open source hardware, and putting all the methods of open source hardware and digital commands outside of the hands of the only technician people or makers. So I set up last year a project on 40, 14 countries in Africa. And one of these projects was Braille Wrap Cameroon. And in Braille Wrap Cameroon, I can show you a picture so you figure on the field. Uh, I, I share my screen. Perhaps, Brianna, could I share my screen? Hmm? Yes, I am giving you access now. Yes. So uh, I show you something more funny is uh, up uh, images, uh, images, images. Okay, screen. Talk. I uh, don't be afraid. I just show you one or two image. Uh, I think here you can see the field. 
On the field, we were in six cities in Cameroon. We never went before with uh, uh, an approach that was not to bring uh, entire machine to the Cameroon. The idea is really to come with only pieces and to teach to all the volunteers, especially the volunteers of Daniel Association and the people in the schools, and also volunteers of International French Speaking Major Association, Gérard. Uh, the idea was to make the machines with the people uh, so that they can repair the machines, invent a local version adapted to the local resources, and find a local technical network uh, to have support, uh, for example, to, to print repair pieces with 3D printers. And uh, we discovered that the people in Cameroon, they are learning at uh, incredible uh, speed when they are motivated. Uh, imagine that you set up a workshop in a city you don't know with something like between 50 and 80 people for each workshop for two days. Imagine that these people, they have never seen the plans of any digital fabrication machine. Imagine they never seen a, a 3D printer or electronic cart. And the goal is very simple. Let's build the machine. We put a computer on the table. On the computer, the technical documentation step by step, uh, step by step to rebuild. And then we have a method with Stefan uh, that was responsible of all the didactical content and the machine. So the people succeed in less than two days to make a machine. And then nobody knows if this machine works. The only way to know if the machine works is that Daniel or another blind person can read what is written on the paper and that nobody knows. When it works, I can tell you, everybody applauds, everybody is motivated, and it's great. As we had many difficulties to find Fab Lab networks in Cameroon, we found another network that is called Active Spaces, that is sponsored by GIZ Foundation, uh, German Foundation, and that makes great people in open source hardware in Cameroon. And so these people came to the workshops, especially in Douala, uh, where we had also the support of Orange Foundation. And then we make uh, the people of this foundation, especially makers, technicians, prototypers, meet with the people of the National Blind Association um, of Daniel. So the people in Cameroon can uh, rely on the technical support of these people on the field. For the moment, we have for the first time in real schools, children that can not only have helped to uh, pass their exam or read their information to be uh, good students, but also things that uh, are very interesting and that you can do only with the Braille Wrap, not with the um, uh, very, um, uh, uh, not with the professional three, um, Braille printers that uh, cost a lot of money. Just one example, with the Braille Wrap, you can take vectors, you can take, for example, an image of a map of a country, and up, you emboss uh, all the drawings, like lines of dots. You can make the same thing for, with mathematics formulas. You can make the same thing with little children to know the, the shape of animals, for example. Uh, we made tests with local poets to emboss poems, so the people discover that, yes, the braille wrap works. And so I can tell you that the braille wrap is, is great because another thing we tested in uh, India is uh, the opportunity to emboss metal sheets, like, you know, uh, soda, um, uh, what is the word in English, Stefan? You know, the, 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 the cans, okay? You take the cans, you cut the cans, you wash the cans, and you emboss the cans. And when you emboss the cans, you can make um, uh, many things useful for the people in uh, public spaces. So they can, for example, have the uh, security information um, uh, know where they are in the city, on both plans of places. We had also many side projects very interesting in India concerning uh, the way the people feel and touch all the supports. For example, uh, uh, taking uh, different texture and uh, um, gluing it on paper so the people, they can use things to know where are the security areas, uh, lifts and things like that. So Braille Wrap, in fact, is a kind of forest that began, like in the open source hardware, 
with little IDs. And we have we had a great difficulty in the middle of the project. It was that uh, when Oracle, uh, the big uh, uh, software company, decided to close one part of the uh, source code of uh, its solutions, the BrainWrap project couldn't rely on, on some very important development that make the machine able to embossed um, standard documents. So Stefan worked and works every day a lot on the Braille rap. Uh, Stefan, what is the English name for the music uh, language? The partition music, s'il te plaît. Music? So we can emboss music score, for example, for the people learning in the uh, school music with the Braille rap today. So one thing that is very difficult for us is to be here by the public uh, territories or institut institutional actors because they never heard about open source hardware or low cost solutions. The other thing that is interesting is the work that we try to make together to have the less possible pieces that you can't find in your country. For the moment, it concerns only two pieces. The electronic cart, that's a classical electronic cart of a RepRap machine, and it concerns um, a solenoid, the magnet, electromagnet. It costs less than $3, but you can't find it easily in Cameroon, for example. All the rest are pieces you can find or 3D print on the field. So I think this project is very interesting. The last word is to explain why an association like the Climate Change Lab is um, involved in this kind of projects. For us, it's very important to consider that the people with disabilities will probably be with the poor people, one of the first victims of the effects of the climate change. If they can't have the information or provide solutions they invent for themselves, uh, it will be very difficult to, uh, for them. So the idea is to make it more easier for all this population to read and to write solutions for them and the others. And we must very rapidly provide open source solutions to make it easier. Thank you for your attention. We're here for the questions and we have many other things to say. Great. Thank you, Hugo, Stefan, Daniel. I really appreciate the presentation. I will go ahead and stop recording um, so that we can move into a discussion. So let me do that.